Morning, Rockstar. Hope you're having a phenomenal day. Welcome to Wednesdays with Insane McLean. Shout out to Zach Hansen for that handle as well. Um, I will be changing my Instagram to that, but they were all talking about McLean Train, and I'm like, no, let's do something more insane. So then Zach literally pieced one and two together and said insane McLean. So that's kind of where that all started. And most of you, if you don't know me, I'm a doctor of physical therapy uh, located right next to Pinnacle here. We train the most elite athletes, your athletes that come through the door. Uh, a lot of recovery, a lot of fitness, a lot of nutrition, a lot of mindset training. And it is definitely next level. And one of the things that I see a lot and I've got a lot of questions on lately is shoulder rehab and shoulder return to the mat progressions. Uh, a lot of time what you see and I'll say straight up front, go see the other guys for initial shoulder rehab. Uh, they can do the mobility stuff. They can work on turning back on some of the muscles. They can work on some of the initial uh, strengthening of that shoulder. But the transition gap that we see over and over and over again is when they're done from their traditional physical therapy and they need to get back to the highest level sport, aka wrestling, here at Pinnacle on the mat. And there is a lot of things that go into this and some of the variables I'm going to point out um, are going to be very obvious and some of the other ones are going to be many people don't ever recognize it and they don't acknowledge it in the rehab program. So first off, I'm going to show you this video here and the first one through is going to show you going really fast what the heck's going on. Um, but we're doing mat returns first and when you see this, he has a right shoulder injury going on. So when he returns back to the mat, his right arm kind of collapses every time. But when we do a return to the left, he's solid, he posts and he gets right back up. So one of the biggest things we see is not only do I have to get back to doing push-ups from a rehab standpoint, but I have to be able to support myself and post and be able to absorb and explode forces back up of me plus somebody else coming down with excessive amounts of force. So that would be number one that I see all the time is kids don't know how to accept a mat return position or even when they go to finish a shot, if they go to post out, huge injury re-risk there um, because of that instability and lack of confidence in that shoulder through that position. The second video you're gonna see is a hanging position. Uh, what we do is compare side to side, one, for overall duration of the hang that they can do from the affected to unaffected side, and then two, the actual amount of control that they have. So what you'll see is on his left side, he is able to hang about the same time that he can on his right, which is his affected limb is his right, um, but what you see is that he's actually got some pretty good control on his left. So his shoulders stay closer to level, um, and he's not just hanging out here on the left side. On the right side, what you'll see is that when he's hanging, he'll start to drop that far side because he doesn't have the strength of this shoulder to lock him back up in place and hold it there. So then the last part that we always ask is subjectively, what do you feel with that? On his left, he said, no, I just feel like I don't have a lot of strength there. On his right, it feels like it's gonna rip out of the socket, right? So we definitely have some situations in wrestling, aka when I take a shot and it's not the best shot, we don't always take the best shots every time, and I get extended out, right? Now, not only do I have to be able to support my shoulder here, but I also have to be able to support somebody else torquing on my elbow, trying to stuff my head, torque the elbow up, and get around behind me. And now when I start going out to the side, I have to have that shoulder control and that stability, and this is a great test side to side to see where they stand and what they start to feel, because it is one of the highest level demands that we can place on the shoulder, um, from a, a fitness like therapeutic rehab model besides just jumping onto the mat and saying hey take the load baby I hope it feels good because it's not going to feel good they aren't confident and they're going to start to compensate in their wrestling and technique for that. The last one you're going to see here is a, a worm position and it, it's literally just like that I have them dive into that worm position for the same reasons as getting mat return um, for trying to get up and push out of there what we see on the mat is a lot of kids will start to compensate here because they don't have the initial overhead strength to get them to push up and out of the bottom. Uh, and then again with the mat return part, when they start going to the mat, they don't know how to absorb the force. So you'll see him automatically transfer to his left immediately upon mat return because he's much stronger there and he can absorb the force. And his right arm kind of sits out here doing his own thing. This is some examples of this kid was returned back to sport uh, graduated physical therapy and then he's having some discomfort as he gets back to the mat and the last part that I want to discuss is the fear avoidance belief part right and these kids unfortunately 
Uh, I was there and we were all there at one point, think we're bulletproof. And they don't know the difference of coming back 100% or coming back 80%. They just want to get back to it. The re-injury risk that we see there is through the roof and it's exponential. And once they start to align the dots and you put them through these things, you ask them strategically, what are you feeling here? You know, is that 100%? Do you feel like you're strong enough to handle that position? And initially they're going to say yes. Every time you ask them a question like that, they're just going to say, yeah, absolutely. I'm good to go, mom. Like it felt, felt good. And then we start showing them this stuff and they start to align the dots. And I'm like, hey, do you think you're 100%? Do you think you're ready to step in the room with the state level, national level, world level guys that you're going to be competing with? And obviously they start drawing that map real fast saying, no, I'm not quite there. So that is next level shoulder stuff. First, we need the mobility and neuromotor control, which is turning on the right nerves and the right muscles at the right time. Most physical therapists will get them through that point. Then we need to go into the high level loading and exploding phases. Uh, those are two separate phases. One is a lot of strength. The other one is the explosive speed work with the shoulder. Uh, a lot of people don't ever get there and they don't have the confidence to load shoulder injuries because if something did happen while they were loading it, they wouldn't feel 100% uh, satisfied or their model of care would not uh, allow that because they are within a hospital setting, etc. Um, so that is really the transition gap that we cover here. Body rejuvenation is from that high level uh, return to sport position. And a lot of that goes back to nutrition, eating right to let those tissues really heal up, getting that bedtime protein in so that their muscles get stronger after we start an intense rehab program like this, and then getting their confidence and their mindset back, getting them on, on par so that they have the mindset to be the best and not, you know, I'm scared or I'm fearful of this shoulder because that will compensate everything from there. It doesn't matter if they're youth, if they're high school, um, it will affect their collegiate careers ahead and it will affect their, the rest of their life if they aren't confident with their shoulder as well. So that is a little bit from Wednesday with Insane McLean. I hope it helps you guys out with any shoulder injuries. If you guys have questions, obviously reach out. Um, Brandon and Jared are phenomenal at working together too. So just make sure you talk with those guys if you have any questions and we'll get in touch. Have a phenomenal Wednesday. Keep impacting the world and keep spreading smiles.